Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. We are continuing to learn about the reactive forms and in today's episode we will learn about the different form states and how we can use that information to build an interactive user experience for the user. Especially when you are trying to do an error messaging to the user, notification or highlighting or even for that matter handling the form at the back end. Let's learn all about it in today's episode. This is part 65 of the Angular 10 complete tutorial playlist. I have planned more than 100 tutorials in this series. The playlist link is in the description box below. Make sure you check it out. The notes and the code uh, is also updated in the GitHub link. So make sure you check it out as well. Following are the topics that I've already covered in, as part of this series. Make sure you check it out. If you have any doubt uh, in any of these particular tutorials that I've covered, please do let me know in the comment section. I will try and help you as much as I can. All the topics are covered from very basic to advanced so that it will help you to master Angular. Today we are in the 65 episode. Today we are learning about reactive forms, form states. A quick note uh, for our viewers who are joining us new in this particular series, reactive forms are a way to create forms in Angular application. There are two types of uh, forms that we can build in Angular application, template driven forms or reactive forms. I've covered all of that in the detail in the previous episodes. Make sure you go through this particular series playlist to learn and master everything from scratch. When we talk about reactive forms, the first thing we should do is import the reactive forms module in our module, app module, or in any module that you're trying to work with basically. Remember three important things about the reactive forms module, form group, form control, and form builder. You'll find yourself using with these three quite often. Today's topic is to stick to angular form state information. So we have different states that we uh, maintain and follow for reactive forms. Angular has a, has a mechanism to track the forms at all times, which means whenever we work with forms, Angular knows exactly what state that particular form is, whether it is valid, whether it is invalid, whether it is pending, pristine, dirty, touched, untouched, etc. It goes, it can be in any state at any given point of time. Now let me quickly give you an overview of each of this state and then we'll jump into the use cases and do some hands-on exercises. Again friends, the form, the handling of errors can be like an ocean, okay? Which means that there can be so many permutation and combinations that you can do with the forms. But what I'll try and do for you is try and cover as much ground as possible so that you get a complete picture of how to handle forms and its states. All right, so the first one, ng valid is tells whether the form is valid or not at any given point of time. Same way, ng invalid will give you true or false whether the form is valid or not, right? If it is invalid, it will give you true. If it is not invalid, it will give you false. That's a negation of valid. ng pristine, um, it's nothing but it's pending, right? ng pending, whether the form is pending to submission ng pristine it will tell you that the user touched it but the data was not modified right so it was not modified and ng dirty means the form was touched the form controls were touched the data was modified ng untouched means the form control was never touched the form was never touched ng touched means that particular form control had click on it like for example you focus on it and then you stepped out that means you touched it, right? So that is the meaning of touched. I'll show you all of this in action right now. It will make much more sense and will be clear absolutely. If you have any doubts during in, for any of these, let me know in the comment section. I'll try and create an example for you. Alrighty, so let's get started. Uh, we'll do some uh, use cases around it. We'll check if the form is valid or not. We'll do some form control additions like dirty, touched, pristine, etc. All right. Uh, so let's get started with hands-on activity. So this is our form, um, simple form, nothing complex. We'll make it complex going forward. But for now, let me just create this. Okay, so this is our form, nothing fancy, just has this fields. Okay, and let's add some error messaging based on our 
type. So if you look at the form control, this is what we had done in the last episode. We said for loan name is required, should have minimum length 10, should have maximum length 20, right? Let's say this is one of our validators that we have added. Now let's use that in the form to display it. So I'm going to say ng if, when should you display this? Only when there is an error. And what kind of an error? Let's see that. We are going to say this dot form dot get. This method will get you the control name. Same name that you have it here. Then you are going to say dot has error. And you are going to check what kind of error it has. Now you we applied the validators required minimum length, maximum length, right? So Angular will give us that kind of error. So here I'll say if it has the um, error which is required right? and see I'm adding a condition here now and I'm saying if this field was touched and if there is no data right and touched if it was touched then I'm going to say loan name is required now see I click on it I step out now it says loan name is required right because I added the condition now I'm going to add a quick class right so loan name is required again you can make it into the next line so that it's right loan name is required so what I've done I've added a condition which says in this form get the control loan name and check if it has the error required and the loan name field is touched right touched means I clicked on hover I clicked on focus like this and I stepped out see again I now this is on focus when I blur that is step out it will check because it was touched right now same way let's add one more same way and I I will say if the required is min length we will say loan name should be minimum of 10 cars right loan name right now what's the error here okay has error okay loan name is required and now it says loan name should be minimum of 10 characters C right so this way you can keep switching and give user a better experience in terms of error messaging right when you don't enter anything the message is loan name is required the user enters some details but now you are telling loan name should be minimum of 10 characters now let's add one more to this and here if the max length error then you say should not be should maximum should maximum have 20 characters right when you click on it loan name is required you enter some it says loan name should be minimum of 10 characters you enter more than 20 loan name should have maximum 20 characters so what you are importantly learning here is getting the error message based on what type of validator it is and then you are checking dot touched right that's the first check now let's say user fills some information here okay so now the form is enabled right so now on click of the form right so I'm going to comment off this here Now see so you can get the form value here this dot add loan dot valid right so this will give you all the state information at any point of time so if you say this dot dot invalid console dot log so so see this is getting tracked right pending pristine right and check out 
So these are all the states that are always available to us at any given point of time for us to validate or play with. Untouched, right? So you can use any of these uh, values and we can do our conditional you know operators like if it is dirty if it is touched pending pristine valid invalid etc right and that's a very very powerful thing so let's enter some values let's enter some values now our form is enabled open the browser and now come down here and click add now we'll see true false 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 true true false let's see one by one is valid this is true because all the fields are entered it is true is it invalid no it is not so this is a good reason that before you do even submission you can say if the form is valid then only proceed right a lot of times you will go and make an api call in your submit so you should do something like this right so what you're doing is you're saying only if the form is valid do this if the form is invalid right do this right so you can put some conditional operators based on the form availability is it pending no it is not it was submitted so it should be oh it got refreshed right now it false false right so this is false is it pristine no it is not is it dirty now see this is important it's true because the data was changed right was it touched yes it was touched that's why it is it entered the value is it untouched false right so this is how you can manage all the form fields form state information and at the same time you can also use the forms uh, the field state information right to show the error messaging or handling right very very important especially when you are doing some kind of uh, operations like validation inserting checking right um, so at any point of time you can get the information of this form at any stage whatever stage it is right um, yeah so that's pretty much all um, form states are that we have covered give it a try let me know um, how it goes um, let me know if you have any issues or um, any any doubts that you see in the code i'll be more than happy to help you in the next episode, we will learn how to reset the form values that we have seen. And then we'll start with the dynamic adding and removing of the elements, start making the form little complicated. All right. Cool. So join me in the next episode where we'll learn about how to reset the form values. Thank you so much for joining. If you like my tutorial, please do like, share, subscribe to my channel. Also, if you like my work and tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buy me a coffee.com slash arc tutorials thank you so much again see you in the next episode